hello ladies and welcome back for another video in today's video i am sharing my preschool curriculum and why i chose the things that i have okay so i'm just gonna jump right in here um i have a pre-k four right i also have a pre-k one <laughs> okay enough with that right you all know how that's gonna go right i'm just focusing on the four-year-old to be honest but those two together are a duo dynamic in this house let me tell you <laughs> okay um i did promise that i would share the curriculum that i have for my little guy and so that's what i'm gonna do today okay so just bear with me um because i want to explain why i want to get into the nitty-gritty of why one thing you hear a lot that i say on my channel is that i'm like eclectic and for those that of you that are new to homeschooling it basically means that i kind of function on a little bit i grab a little bit from here and there of all the known methods that are out there i mean there's so many homeschooling methods and educating methods and teaching i know we had some um, teachers who are now watching who are parents who had their own method of teaching in school and now find that that is not even helpful for their student at home their child at home right so I basically have done the eclectic mess, the eclectic method for th throughout the entire school years. As you know, I just graduated um, my first one this school year that just passed. So over the summer, we graduated him. Um, and once I kind of said, okay, I I'm giving up on this, you know, one curriculum fits all. I actually like this because of this and I like this because of this and I like that because of that then it started to be more of a better suit for us because along the way you are learning your teaching style and how your mind is functioning and working how you're processing information and how you're able to um, to impart that information on others but you're also learning how your student how your child soak and absorb that information Mommy. and if it's not a great fit it's everything is just going to crumble and yes that has happened to me that's why i know okay so um i just want to be kind of really honest here and transparent it's not always easy and you have to find what's working for you and your child for you and your student and you can't really focus on what everyone else is doing because you can be bombarded with so much information because everything is kind of always evolving and changing now this curriculum came out and everyone wants to try this and and um you know this program online program came out and now everyone wants to do that and you're like wait a minute but i just brought this you know like you're always kind of you you'll start to feel like you're always one step behind of the the trend you know but i want to tell you that you can homeschool with anything anything that is going to suit you and your child okay um, I know I have some grandparents who are watching too, so I don't want to constantly say your child, but your student, um, you know, your grandchild, whoever it is that you are ch um, training or teaching, you can impart that um, on them and you can do it with very little. If you don't mind, I'll tell you a quick story, right? So my, maybe I'll leave that for another video. Okay. Yeah, I will. Okay. So the methods that i tend to follow charlotte mason classical and montessori okay now with the montessori approach you're working on more of your practical skills so sweeping the floor mopping maybe washing dishes a really fun way for a, that you can incorporate this into a preschool curriculum is to give your child just a little little cup of water and a sponge and ask them to wash the chairs like if your legs of the chairs are filthy or, you know, uh, or just even if they're not, it's like at their level and it's something that they can do that's safe. You know, they're not going to fall off the ladder or the chair or anything like that. And it's just a very, very like grown up thing that they feel like they're doing. Wow, I'm helping out. We also call this doing the chores. <laughs> okay. It's life skills. They can also help by tossing a salad, you know, getting in the kitchen 
is a great way for them to explore also be under your supervision um they also like my four-year-old he's at an age where he is able to actually help train my one-year-old uh she goes around watching everything that he does she's kind of his shadow and, and together you know when he's on his game his four-year-old game he actually is a big help okay and um so even if it comes to like self-care brushing the teeth you know step getting on the step stool brushing the teeth um brushing the hair you know combing his hair and things like that these are all just things that you want to implement and i'll tell you one thing too it's it, it's very helpful to have this monetary approach when it comes to practical skills because when you're in a large family sometimes there are a few stragglers that get left behind and you're like wait a minute oh my goodness he's not and i haven't even taught him how to tie his shoes yet you know like but at the same time the reason why i say this is helpful is because the older ones start to teach the younger ones and you're like it'll be like i think i i, I can't remember if i shared this with you all or not but like um i had one child at the time who was like 14 and he was speaking to my uh another four-year-old that i had at the time about dna and germs and i was like hmm i haven't even spoke to her about that yet <laughs> like okay and i'm just hearing them chat away and she's like wait but how does that work and i was like you know what he, what what they do is that they learn information right but then after soaking it all in they have to share it with someone it's a way for them to to solidify and make it concrete that hey i know this stuff i know what i'm talking about i can hold a conversation on my own and share it with someone else right Daddy. i know i venture off topic so much but it's just it's very it's very good to teach these skills because some things that my older child was doing at four like my younger one is not even doing it yet. why it's not that he's lazy or anything it's not that i forgot but it's just that we have so many people in the house that is able to tackle this before you even think about having the four-year-old do it you know so and then sometimes what worked when i only had one or two kids is not working anymore now that i have eight you know so yeah montessori skills practical life skills i love it and it is a part of my four-year-old's curriculum i don't have anything to show like book or anything because you're actually living this learning is all day every day it's it's embedded into everything that we do in life you know whether it's we're speaking holding on conversation and they're listening they're learning how to speak they're learning that a conversation takes me speaking and you replying you know so that's that yes very you need help okay hold on one moment okay so i helped her with her situation <laughs> Daisy is a mess. The classical approach, um, and that is just offering great literature to him. And so what I'm going to be using for that is um, before five in a row. Um, that is a curriculum. I always try to post the picture up there for you. But I do have majority of the books uh, from his list. Uh, from the list for before before five in a row but i do want to show you something going back to montessori i have these books here um it's a montessori approach um it's not part of the practical living section but it's it's just another another um aspect of it and these are it's just a book that it's kind of like a sandpaper like it's kind of rough when you feel this but you're basically discussing letters you see here so this is good and then you would trace it and you can feel the sandpaper this is good as in goat and that's pretty much all you say and they start to kind of get it after a while and you you'll talk like oh this is shaped like a circle and this is a line and this you know then you have like ones where it's like oh this is a curve you know different things like that so uh, he likes this i've used it already on um a stu one of my students before him that's why it's all beat up and i shop off my shelf <laughs> and here's another one yes um these are well loved and i don't get rid of them until like i have a friend who says it's pulp fiction <laughs> like i don't know if you get it but anyway <laughs> all right so here we go uh how many owls do you see let's count and then this is one 
and then you would just let them rub their finger down the side, down, down the um, number. And then how many pigs do you see? And you count one, two, you see, this is two. And then you would have them trace it. And it's not rough. It's it's not like rough, that rough that's gonna peel off your your fingerprint or anything like that. But um, it it you can feel that you can definitely make the distinction between this part of the book and the um, number portion or the letter portion and the other one. And actually, we have one that's for the continents too. But he's using it somewhere around here, and I'm not gonna stop for this video. Okay. Um, another thing, while I'm on the subject of that, let me just go into how um, math so you have there right there right numbers right and then you would just skip books like this you see count by fives and then you go in here and count you can actually buy your Reese PCs or your Skittles or m &Ms. I oh yeah I do have um the m, m one like this also but that one is just counting by singles this one is counting by fives and it's fun and he's a boy so of course we got to go with the whole cars anything on wheels or that can bounce my boys love it and that's basically math and you get the abacus you know like where you're just counting um so you kind of count by ones count by twos we also could count with beans um i had uh a <laughs> we sometimes skip count the tiles by twos and we're like two four six eight ten and we just hop in the house along and hopscotch another way that we work on numbers is with uh, just file folder games so i just kind of print out something here this is from shelf work by um so jda um i'm basically not trying to reinvent the wheel here mama don't have time for all that so um you just went up i go on to her site and other sites i print out this i laminate it and then i attach like any type of envelope here where i can put the pieces in and so this one here basically so we uh let me see if i can get something of of each here okay so let's say for the trains right this is three trains so then he has to identify where the three is at and he would put this right here this is one train we're counting see he put it here <gasps> this is four trains so we will put it over here and that's another way to get our math in and this is two trains and we would put it right here you see and then after that we will go to the next ones and the bikes they have bicycles and buses and stuff like that so file folders are great uh, way for for getting that education in and making it fun and all that okay so with before five in a row um like i said i'll link that there for you but we're going to be reading this is offering great literature classical is all about a great literature approach and you want to kind of the reason why i like it is because you actually um what is there's a book it's called oh the well-trained mind so she kind of states it as you're giving them these pegs right but then as you're reading and as they keep gathering facts and as they get older they start to know where to categorize oh oh okay blueberries oh that's a fruit you know oh this is science you know just different things like that so um when you give them stories they kind of relate you're kind of taking them somewhere else you know with the f beyond, before five in a row, I do already have the books. The book is somewhere, I wanna say it's maybe in my van, but my husband is out right now. That's why it's semi-quiet because I just have Daisy. So we have blueberries for Sal, and of course we have to eat blueberries with this. You cannot read this and not eat blueberries. And that is the great thing about five in a row or before five in a row, because my little guy is before five, right? They take the, the literature and each day that you read it you're getting a different aspect of this book so you may talk about getting in the kitchen because of what sal and mom does in this book you may talk about being out in nature because they go out in nature and they start picking blueberries you may want to speak about animals because there is a bear in this in this uh, book 
they just come at it from so many different angles. And there may be an art project on this particular book the next day where you're actually just maybe dipping your finger in blue paint, finger paint, right? And just, you know, putting it on your paper and you're making blueberries or it could be um, a Q-tip and, you know, dip it in, in your paint and then dipping them there and you're making a paper, um, a picture of blueberries. So they take one book and you get many different aspects for different days. So you can take one book, read it five times. So like the whole week or four times or three times, whatever you want to do, because what works for you works for you. Um, you'll get a different aspect of this each time you read it. And at the same time, your child will start to memorize and remember the events and can chronological, chronologically tell you what happened. They put them in sequence order as well. Um, and so that's what I like about five in a row. Is it's a, more of a classical approach, I feel, for the, uh, for the child. So we have blueberries for sale, corduroy, which I must tell you, I will not tell you which child, but one of my kids were very scared of the clown in this book. <laughs> we're going on a bear hunt. We actually love this book. Angus Lost. I am an artist. Let me tell you about this. If you just read this book and then go outside and lay down and look at the clouds, you can be like literally hours just laying there eating something, snacking, and watching all the different shapes and movements of the clouds. It's just, it's a peaceful way to pass the time when you need that. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. He's a very good art um, author. Caps for sale. <laughs> Caps for sale. I still have sal on my mind. The Big Blue Pocketbook. This is great. This is more girly, but it works. Good Night Moon. Okay, in this, we like to follow the mouse and try to find out where the mouse is on, on every every picture, right? So that's that. We also have um, prayers for children, which I, I'm i not quite sure. I think the other the one that she has on her for this list is um, prayers for a child. But this one's prayer for children. Um, and then it's just, he loves this one. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And then my, my baby girl, she likes this one, the uh, Goodnight Gorilla. We follow the balloon in this one. You got to follow the balloon. If you're not following the balloon, what are you doing? And with the mouse too. You can follow the mouse too, but you got to follow the balloon. And tell me in the comments below if you follow the balloon in this one. I love it. My kids love it also. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, this year, that's something a little bit new for him is that Whenever I get a time and whenever I get a moment, I'm going to start incorporating Aesop's Fables for Young Readers. It's by Becca. This is the teacher's guide. It's, a, it's from the uh, first grade program, but it's never too early to start teaching your child morals. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for him. And along with, this is the other one, A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, there's some great poems in here that I want to um, share with him. When I can and when he is available and when I am available, um, <laughs> it's definitely not something that I'm stressing, trust me. It gradually, it all starts to work together in its time. Um, another thing um, is from something that I have, right? It's character trait building within your child and this one is from heartofwisdom.com it's something that i don't even know if it's on her website anymore or not uh, let me see if i can share it here heartofwisdom.com and she has a great um character traits list there that you can print out and it gives you the bible verses so if you want to um, talk a little bit about being appreciative being available being compassionate concerned um, con content um, creative decisive diligent uh, faithful fair efficient um, she kind of does a really great job of 
giving you the the definition along with the scripture reference for that and that's something this is actually something that um i kind of do with all of my kids um not necessarily him my little guy but this is again something that we're implementing this year so that he can be more aware of other people and more aware of himself and more aware of is my actions edifying the lord and i know it's such a big word and i know it might be a big concept for someone so little but it's very important that we start instilling this in our young our little guy from a young age and so that's what the lord has put on my heart to do with him this year and we are gonna move forward with that one of my other ones used to have this curriculum by rod and staff and this is the bible stories to read and so you basically you read a little story and then you have um, like three little questions to answer at the bottom and just the comprehension questions to see if you understand uh, or if they understand what the story was about. And it's to open up that dialogue and that discussion, um, you know, again, holding conversation. They also have the uh, Bible verses that they're learning at the same time. So that's it. There, When I purchased this curriculum, there was a coloring book along with it. Again, I no longer have that because that child has used it. And now with everything being on the internet, I can easily just print something off. Like if I'm gonna look up David and Goliath, I can easily just print off a coloring sheet online and stick that in his folders and have him color this along with the story. By, by implementing the biblical stories and the um, character traits, that is following more of a Charlotte Mason method where we're focusing on the whole child not just his mind and academics you know we want to instill good habits we want to instill godly character in him um, and in all of our children and so a charlotte mason approach kind of gives that as a whole and encompass the whole child you want to know how are they feeling and you know what's going on through their mind and just even allowing them that time to to um to lead family prayer you kind of see what's on their heart what what are they thinking? What is, um, what are they giving praise to? And what are they feeling hurtful for right now? Or is that about, or, or need, need help in a certain area? And um, so that approach, the Charlotte Mason approach, it allows all that to take place. With the Charlotte Mason method, you also are able to get outside and do a lot of nature studies with them and just um, I mean, I know you'll see a lot of parents doing these nature journals and such, but um, right now he's not really there. He doesn't really have any interest in that um, as far as painting and drawing and such. So you leave it alone. It'll come in due time when you, you know, you're you learning your child, you'll, you'll notice that. Or you can go ahead and nurture that, but nurture it slowly so that they can still have that interest in it, right? So right now he loves turning over a rock looking inside of a flower and seeing what's there and that's all of just getting outside and playing they like they have to be kids you have to let them get that energy out some way and so um that's what i like about the charlotte mason approach to things i don't want to put this under the category of uh, classical but I mean it's it's phonics it's reading along with the great literature you want to give them phonics right and for that I know you've probably seen it many times before but it's teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons and um, if I may be real with you we seem to have been stuck in a certain um, lesson for a while I, because I started this too early with him I will well not that I started too early but I started and he grasped and then he stopped. He didn't want to do it anymore. And that was fine. I let it go. And now all of a sudden he's wanting to do it again and we're jumping back into it. And he's four and I think we're still like on pace, if I may say, like, you know, I don't know what that even means, but he wants to read and so I'm feeding it to him again. And um, what we do is we kind of like, we, we kind of um, cover up the picture He'll read the word and then, you know, or the sentence, he'll read the, the sentence or the word, whatever it is. In the beginning, it's more of like one or two words. Once you start getting more towards the middle, you start having, you know, they start incorporating a few more words. And so, and, that, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so this is what he's reading for phonics and he enjoys it. 
he definitely like likes the suspense of reading it and then uncovering the picture so that we can discuss it and as long as that drive is there i'll keep going i will tell you that um sometimes i have to kind of pull the lessons out and work with him a different way still giving him the foundation and the core that's of what is in here so it's working and we're gonna leave it like that you know okay moving on so with the classical approach it also talks about uh, memorizing facts and so I'm not really doing too much of that on purpose um, he is getting a few, I would say, uh, memorization sentences for history, but that's just because he is around when my older kids are learning. And when they are memorizing their history facts or timeline cards or multiplication facts, he's around. And actually, if I might be, if I may be quite honest with you, I have one child that learned how to read. And sometimes I wonder, I'm like, how did she learn how to read because i don't think i did that <laughs> like and i think it was just that she was around when i was teaching her older brothers and me not even realizing it she was picking up and absorbing everything and so if you have older ones i would say you know don't try to like push off the younger ones incorporate them as much as possible and let them play around even while work is studies are going on because they pick up so much like you'll be amazed and so with the classical approach with memorizing facts i'm not doing any of that intentionally he's just picking up whatever he wants here and there as he's around you know so okay so i think i mentioned something about putting something in his folder this is basically what i'm talking about so i have a binder here right and it i basically have these uh pocket folders let me see oh, this is okay i have these pocket folders right and so i have four of them one two three four right and basically what i do is like on the weekend i just kind of find some um worksheets and I find it a few ways. One of the ways that I get them is through um, dollar store workbooks, right? So like this one here is just, it's from, the, from Dollar Tree and it's a water painting book. So I literally just tear out the pages and I put one in for each day. And then I'll go to um, something online and print out something for him he is very much into um uh, cutting and pasting right now my boys seem to be very much into their motor skills when they're younger um throwing footballs and hopping around and jumping and and cutting is one of them so i give it to them so here he just kind of had to put things in sequence that and then uh, cut and paste that there this one here I found off another, I uh, found from another website and we're just cutting, I mean, we're, we were just um, counting and saying, hey, that's not one, that's not two, one, two, three, that's actually three, let's circle that. So we did some of that. And here, like here, I just printed out something that says M is for motorcycle and he colors that because ah. here's the thing, there are times when they want to be big kids too. They see everybody else working and they want to do school, okay? And it's not that you have to feed them um, all this expensive curriculum and, and you know, they, they've got to do a writing program, they got to do a reading program, you, you've got to buy the most expensive thing on the shelf, you've got to buy what everybody else is buying, you have to buy what's trending right now, you don't. Trust me, you don't, okay? And so you can just print out something online, give them, look at this, I'm not trying to pick up 121 color pencils off of the floor one green color pencil that's all you get my man <laughs> when you finish give it back to mama don't write on any other walls okay <laughs> and uh, let me see what else we have here oh yes okay this one if you don't know about this one this is um easy peasy yes you say excuse me mommy okay i'm coming Okay, so that is by Easy Peasy. And um, what it is, is 
it's like a hide and seek type of works worksheet where let me pull it out for you she talks about um the letter like this one is e and then she'll give you like a whole story and you can read it to the student and it'll actually kind of make the the sound of the letter right but they go through and they find they do hide and seek and they find the capital e and the lowercase e and she goes through, through it for every letter right and the good thing about this is that if you don't have let's say you know paper and and you know um printer and stuff like that you can literally just get any type of junk mail that comes in and work on that particular letter for the week so let's say you have a um, uh, a flyer or a supermarket flyer and say hey let's find all the t's today and you literally just go through circle and find all the t's like it's that easy you don't even have to buy a curriculum for 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 you know recognizing letters or anything like that you can use flashcards you can make your own flashcards and such so that is what i do and then of course there is the um, water painting where i have put them in here and i just give them a cup and a little paintbrush and you know nothing that's gonna get my furniture all stained up and or my walls and um he actually helps out his little sister in that area so it makes him feel you know capable right and that is um how i work out his folder for for the week and basically it's not something that i feed and push on him every day whenever he says mom i want to do school i say all right let's get your folder out and it's easy it's right there i'm not stopping i'm not trying to go on the computer and find something and pull something else up I've, i have too many people on the computer this year to kind of interrupt their flow to print out a worksheet for him so i do it on the weekends or um you know friday night or whenever i just uh, my main thing is to make sure it's filled to, that way he has something to do it's just something ready and available on hand or I can just easily tear out a page from one of the Dollar Tree books and put it in there. And they have great things too, you know, especially, I mean, for, for a younger one. Um, they've got like numbers and letters and shapes and colors. They work on so many different things within those books that um, it's easy to just kind of put something together on your own. And the, one, the other thing that I like about the notebook, the um, binder system, is that he's not going through and just scribbling on every page and one day and then the workbook is no good any longer um it's more organized right and then the other thing um is that i'm just working on his interests right now so that's the other reason why you don't want to just be pushing them and feeding them with all this curriculum and stuff right now you work on the interests, and one thing that he is taking a liking to are bugs right now and so like literally he just had my husband they were having the discussion on spiders earlier today um so yeah we just literally just go this one is national geographics right but you have now the usborne books and and the um there's some readers at the dollar tree also of different insects and things like that so that works great as well um and then there's my writing program which is not really a program at all <laughs> it is chalkboard and a little piece of chalk that's it and i i'll link that down below in the description box where i basically he actually demonstrates how we do that but um yeah nothing fancy nothing fancy at all but it is getting the job done so um that's that hey if you stuck around to the end and you like the content that I'm putting out, please go ahead and subscribe and share this to others. That way I know that this is relevant to viewers out there and I'm not just putting out, you know, anything, <laughs> anything that no one doesn't want to see, okay? Thank you so much for sticking around. In my next video, I'm going to be sharing some of the difficulties of homeschooling. And I know that's something that isn't so transparent these days, but, um, I am going to be sharing that with y'all. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Say, hey, can you say bye-bye? Hmm. <laughs>